Dear students, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving me the opportunity to contribute to this project, which focuses on building energy literacy in Slovenia, Croatia and Hungary. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you in person. Probably you have heard that today I am on a visit to Ljubljana, but commitments there did not allow me to come to beautiful Maribor. But I'm happy to have at least the possibility to share some thoughts with you in this way. You will be discussing a very important topic today, energy efficiency. The challenges ahead are many, but allow me to place the discussion in a wider, more global perspective, because energy efficiency is an important part of this bigger picture. Our planet's population is expected to rise to more than 9 billion by the middle of the century. By 2030, we will share our planet with an additional 3 billion middle-class consumers. The estimates are that we will need three times more resources, 140 billion tons annually by 2050. Yet, already today, 60% of our ecosystems underpinning these resources are degraded or are used unsustainably. It is clear that our future will be very much shaped by how well we manage these existing limited resources, energy, but also water, land, oceans, raw materials, biodiversity, ecosystems, and the complexity of their interactions. The pressures on natural resources will be the most significant limiting factor on our ability to grow and provide higher living standards everywhere in the world. Using our natural resources in a more efficient way is not only about safeguarding the environment, it is also about future competitiveness, long-term prosperity, economic growth and job creation. It is about shaping our future for me, one of the most important answers to present and future challenges, if not the most important answer, is to put the knowledge-based, resource-efficient, low-carbon economy at the centre of our political attention and actions, making the green economy a reality. But for this, we need change. We need to rethink the way we function, the way we produce and consume. We need to build the basis for a different quality of growth. This is why, in the European Union, we have made the efficient use of natural resources a central pillar of our growth strategy. The objective is a transition towards an economic growth model that allows us to continue to grow using less resources. Considering the global trends, we actually do not have a choice. Energy efficiency plays an important role in this, but it should not be looked at in isolation. When we produce the energy we need to power our economy, we also use water, raw materials and, in some cases, soil. At the same time, when we distribute water or extract raw materials, just to give you a few examples, we also use energy. And, of course, energy consumption often leads to emissions and significant impact on climate change. We need to have a more holistic approach if we want to see real change. We need to integrate environmental concerns across all policies, including energy policy. The energy climate package that the European Commission adopted last month is an excellent example of this. The package introduces measures that, through a wider approach, will lead Europe towards a more competitive, secure and sustainable energy system. In parallel, we are working on a package on resource efficiency that is foreseen to be adopted in May this year. The resource efficiency agenda highlights the need to use all of our resources in a more efficient way, also contributing to reducing energy demand. It includes milestones for 2020 related to energy efficiency, eco-design, bioenergy and energy infrastructure development. The objective is to move away from the prevailing linear economic model of resource extraction, processing, use and disposal to a more circular economic model where what today we call waste is reintroduced into the production cycle as the primary resource it originally was. This will reduce the need for raw materials and bring down energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions from extraction and processing. The main focus of the package will be the review of the European Union waste legislation with the objective of shifting the focus from managing waste, as it is today, to preventing waste. The package will also include initiatives on sustainable buildings, sustainable food, green entrepreneurship, green jobs, as well as on the international dimension. My objective with this package is to address those issues that still remain open and ensure that 
all the elements necessary to create a solid foundation for our transition towards a green economy are in place. If I conclude, integrating environmental considerations into energy policy is key in ensuring a transition towards resource efficiency and decarbonization. It will also allow to dispel some public concerns over energy projects. It is very important that people are empowered with knowledge in the field of energy. This will enable them to participate in the debate about shaping the future of energy policy and to evaluate decisions on facts and not emotions. For this reason, I very much welcome international projects like Enlight, which contribute to strengthening energy literacy among students, professors, NGOs, media, local and national decision makers. I hope this debate on the Enlight Week and its outcome will be a helpful input also for Slovenian low-carbon energy concept. I wish you a fruitful day and thank you for your attention.